In this video, I'll show you how to use these selection tools to help you with your second design challenge for the letter forms. So you're going to go into Photoshop after you've done your thumbnail sketches and come up with a plan and decided what fonts you're going to use or typefaces. Um, you're going to click File Open. Not File Open, I'm sorry. File New. And you'll make it 6 by 6 inches or 1800 pixels by 1800 pixels by 300 and create. Um, and since we're doing black and white designs, you can leave it in grayscale if you want. Um, so the first thing you'll do is create a type layer with the first letter of your initial. And then another, oops, Sorry, I'm not really sure why this is being weird right now. Okay, let me just move this over. And then another with your second initial. Okay, now these are really big and really hard to deal with right now, so I'm going to change this. I'll do about 150. Okay, so I'm keeping these two um, just these simple fonts, the uh, Avenir. Okay, um, so you're going to want to repeat, rotate, um, play with scale and proportion. Um, but basically, what I want to show you is. Um, what you can do with the selection tools. So let's say I want my M to overlap my A in some way. Okay, let's see. I'll stick it over here, I guess. And I'm going to go ahead and make that a little bit bigger. So I'm going to hit Command T and hold the Shift key down and just drag that out now that it's there. Okay, but now I don't really see the M, right? I totally lose it. So what you can do is you can change this M to a white M by clicking up here and changing it to white. But then you also lose it because now it's blending in with the background. Okay, and this might be something that you want. We looked at some of those font, uh, some of those logo designs where um, that adds to the design. Okay, maybe we don't like that for our for hours though. So I don't know. Um, so oops, I'm gonna change this back to black for now. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is use a selection tool. Um, these are your selection tools. This is Marquee, Lasso, and then these are your quick selection tools. If you click and hold here, you get a fly out menu. You can do quick or magic wand. Magic wand will select um, all of the pixels that are the same color. Um, so that's what we're going to use today for this project. Um, we're going to learn all about these selection tools as we go throughout the year, but this is a really good um, introduction to what they are capable of. So I'm in my M layer. So if I click in the black area of my M, you will see that it automatically selected all the black pixels in this layer. So now my M is outlined. Now, if I want to just change parts of the M, like where it overlaps with the A, like let's say I want to turn that white, um, what I can do is I'm going to click on my intersect with selection option here. Okay, this is pretty advanced. This is probably like the only time you'll ever need this, but I'm going to click on my A layer now, and now I'm going to click in the black area of my A. And what that's going to do is basically subtract that 
so it's only selecting what's intersecting from those two selections. So only the area that is um, overlapping the two areas is selected. Now I could um, add a new layer here, okay, but my selection is still there. Um, and I can click on my paint bucket tool and use the white fill here and now that's filled in okay um, if you don't want to add another blank layer you can also just click on the invert option um, and that will create a mask on just that area okay um, the problem with this though is if you decide to move things around the M around um, the mask is still there and it's inverting the A, which is fine. And this could end up actually being a benefit to you depending on how you want to design this. Okay, but maybe, you know, now you can move this over or whatever you want to do. But if these are separate um, and you move one of them, it won't line up. So if I'm here and I move this, you know but maybe that'll do some interesting things for your design I don't know okay um, but that is basically it uh, for the selection tools for this um, so again just to recap um, selection tool and these are the different options for it so this is just creates a new selection so anywhere I click it will select um, the pixels that are the same color this is add to selection so um, if I click in here, it will add um, the white areas to my selection. Um, if you want to click on contiguous, that will only select what's um, touching basically. So I'm going to hit Command D to deselect. So if I click on my background space, you can see that the whole background white is selected, but not this background. Let me turn that off for a second. Okay, but if I were to deselect contiguous and click on my background, it also includes that because it sees it as the same color. So it depends on what you want to do. So I'm going to just leave contiguous clicked for now. And then this is subtract from selection. So I have my background white area selected and the little triangle, the counter form of that A selected. I can subtract that from the selection. And then we talked about the intersecting with selections. So if I select my A, I select my A. Anytime you want to deselect something, like make sure that nothing is selected, Command D is your keyboard shortcut for that. And I'm going to turn on my M layer and make that my active layer and click on the M and then only the intersecting parts are selected. Um, and like we said, we could create a new layer and fill that in using the paint bucket tool. If you don't see the paint bucket tool, it might be on gradient. Okay, so if you just click and hold, you'll get to your paint bucket tool. And then make sure that this is white. Um, and then you can fill that in. Um, if you just click on the little um, squares here, the little black and white squares, that will default your background and foreground color to white and black and then you can just hit X on your keyboard to toggle back and forth between black and white depending on what you want to do with your image. Okay, um, and then when you're all done with this, you're actually going to create a grid. So you're going to create nine different compositions. So when you're finished with one, you'll go file, save as, initials one. Okay, and then so on and so forth. Initials two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then when you're all done with all of them, just like we did the last assignment here, you are going to um, open up a new document that's going to be 20 by 20. And we'll do a new grid layout, like just like we did, and the light neutral gray. So we'll go to file. Oops, I already did the saving file new and we're going to go to 20 inches and create 
and then we'll do a new solid color fill and a nice light gray and then new guide layout and now we're going to go to um, three columns three rows half inch half inch and half inch all here for margins and you should have something that looks like this and then when you're all done with your documents here your individual letter compositions again you can go to layer flatten image or you could save it as a JPEG and import it that way um, let's do it that way file save as JPEG save okay so um, Uh, let me do open. So after you're done saving everything, if you save everything as a JPEG, you can open them all. I can actually just click on the move tool. Oops. Command A, Command C, and then pop it in here, Command V, um, or move tool, and then I can just hover over and drop it in and then again I'm on my move tool and line up my compositions um, in my grid and then of course I would save as a PSD and then as a JPEG so you have nine unique compositions um, using the two your two initials um, if you want to use a middle name initial too you can if you want to do three um, just make sure that the typeface that you're selecting is conducive to your design um, they don't all have to be the same. Each one can be totally different. Um, but I would stick to some simple sans serif and serif fonts. Like I wouldn't do any of those crazy script or decorative fonts. I think that will detract from your design. Um, of course, you're the artist. It's up to you. That's just my opinion. Um, definitely encourage you to try multiple solutions to the problem, though. So um, you can use the types that are pre-installed um, that come with Photoshop and all that and of course you can use whatever you downloaded from um, any of those free font websites okay so hopefully that explains that aspect um, of the project um, and of course when you're done you would add your signature layer I'm just double checking make sure we talked about everything um, I didn't really talk about rasterizing, so just really quickly. This is kind of an optional step. Um, so this is a type layer, which means I can go back in. If I click on my type tool, I can go back in and select that font or the letter. I can change the size of it quite easily just by doing that. Um, however, it's difficult sometimes to get it to be the exact size that you want. You know, yes, I could type in exact numbers, like random weird numbers if I wanted to. Um, but it can be somewhat limiting in certain ways, okay? Type and shape are vector layers, and what you can do is rasterize them, which will convert the vector into pixels. Um, which is basically just a bunch of tiny little squares. So if we keep zooming in, you can see the little squares, right? Okay, those are little tiny pixels. Um, what I can do is go to Layer, and I can go to Rasterize Type, and now this makes it like a just a pixel layer. So now I cannot edit this A though anymore. It's just the shape that the A is, which is fine, um, because you can hit, still hit Command T and drag your corners, holding the Shift key down, and get it to be the exact size you want. And you might find that that's easier for you. Okay, the only issue with this is if you get too large, you can see the difference quite easily here. After you've rasterized and turned this into a pixel layer, you get these fuzzy edges. 
So no matter how much I zoom in here, this layer is still a vector or a type layer. I have nice crisp edges. But this layer, which I did rasterize and I made quite large, um, you get these weird fuzzy edges. Uh, when you're working small as we are, it's not that big of a deal. So it's up to you. But I would, um, if you know you want your letter to be really big uh, in your composition, I would make it as big as possible using the type tool and just changing the um, size of the type. And then if you need some more, um, you know, freedom away from the type tool, then you can rasterize. But that's totally optional. Um, for us, it won't really matter because we're working kind of small, so it's okay. Um, and, okay. And then for design problem three, while we're here, I'll just talk about it really quickly, is um, basically you're taking all of the things you've learned by creating the first two challenges and creating one really cool dynamic composition um, and really there's no rules there it just has to use letters and it has to be black and white um, and that will be one big composition okay so this again will be converted into is this it yes a grid of nine unique different compositions okay um, and that does it for that thanks for watching